Good evening, or good afternoon, good morning, whatever the time is. It's difficult to tell now what we're all leading this uh, virtual life. And welcome to the online screening of uh, My Son, My Son, A Soviet Silent Film from 1928, directed by Evgeny Shervikov. This film was one of the one of the holy grails of uh, Soviet cinema. It was a lost film that was searched in uh, all of the world cinematheques by dozens of filmmakers and uh, film scholars for decades and decades and decades. And uh, its rediscovery in 2008 in uh, Buenos Aires by Fernando Peña became a big event in Russian film history. Maybe the biggest rediscovery of a Russian film in the last 50 or 60 years. Evgeny Chervikov was born in 1899, so he belonged to the same generation as um, Eisenstein, Bertov, Budovkin, Davremko, um, Erbner, Kozintsev, and Trauberg, uh, the great generation of Soviet avant garde filmmakers. His name is not as popular as those names, and uh, I wouldn't go as far as to say that he is as influential as Eisenstein or Budovkin. No, he isn't, and there is always a risk when you rediscover a name to be uh, too apologetic, you know, to, send this new, to set these new standards too high. But uh, for a short period and one of the most productive periods in Soviet film history, 1928-1929, um, he was considered one of the main alternatives, or that his cinema was considered one of the main alternatives of Eisenstein's cinema. Those days, uh, Soviet filmmakers mostly portrayed uh, people as members of, uh, of the crowd, as members of the mass, where social interests and social values were much more significant, much more important than personal values, individual values. And uh, Chervikov was one of those who really um, uh, stood out. This is what he wrote about this film, My Son, when it was about to be released. The main task was to show by means of the cinema, wrath, love, despair, jealousy, in a word, the entire complicated complex of emotional phenomena that is called the human passions. To show this outside of any accessories of history, everyday life, production, etc. The second task was people. Not things, masses, beautiful views, or ingenious tricks of montage, but people. The psychological collision of two simple people of today, in drab grey surroundings, in the midst of other equally average people, with all their virtues and faults. This is practically a manifesto, a manifesto of this individual, or as we would see on screen, almost existential cinema. Uh, Chervikov was perhaps the only major director of his generation who was, uh, during the Civil War fighting, uh, in the White Army, in the Tsarist Army. This doesn't mean that he was, all his life, uh, actively anti-Soviet or anti-communist, but um, Eisenstein's or Erdner's famous formula, the revolution gave me everything, the revolution is for me, this does not apply for Cher to Chervikov. He belonged to this other pre-revolutionary life with completely different values. And I think that we could see that in his films. Um, he was always, he was an anti-socialist or even anti-social, he was asocial, which makes his cinema much closer to, I would say, films of the 60s. Some of the themes, some of the motifs of his films are much closer to, I would go as far as Antonioni. Um, it is very difficult to find any analogies, psychologically and even stylistically, in Soviet cinema, maybe a little bit in German cinema, a little more in French cinema of the 20s, like the films of Jean Epstein. But he was, of course, quite unique. The tragedy of Chervikov's uh, life and his career and his legacy is that his main uh, silent films, and there were three of them, uh, The Girl from a Far River, Devushka's Velokiriki, 
my son, my son, and uh, the golden beak, Zalatoy Pluf, all three were lost sometime during the war in the 40s. Um, his fourth silent film, Citizen Years, was uh, banned. He had to re-edit it several times. Uh, each time the film became more politicized and much less artistic. Um, Chervikov almost quit making films. He started drinking, he was in a severe state of depression. He resumed filmmaking later on and made some films in the 30s, but they were much inferior to what he made in the silent era, and those films survive, so uh, his existing legacy really misrepresented uh, his real style, his philosophy, his editing techniques. Mm, Chervikov volunteered and uh, went fighting in the Second World War in 1941 and was killed in 1942. And uh, those who knew him well told me that this was a way of committing suicide. because He couldn't find himself in this new Soviet society of the 30s and 40s. Um, when the film was rediscovered in 2008, nobody was alive, of course, from the cast and crew, but at least I was able to show the film to some of the... Um, some of the few members of the uh, families of the cast and crew who were still alive, which was uh, one of the biggest uh, moments of their lives. Uh, my colleague Nikolai Isvolov and uh, I, we, I wouldn't say that we restore the film, but we try to reconstruct it because the film exists uh, in an Argentinian release version with the very talkative uh, Spanish intertitles. So we didn't just replace them with a much more laconic original Russian titles, but uh, we also re-edited it slightly so that the narrative would follow the original one. And the image quality is far from perfect um, because we were dealing with a DVD from a 16 millimeter print. That's all that exists, only a 16 millimeter print. Uh, the uh, middle part of the film is missing, which doesn't really affect the narrative. Um, but what you will see now is uh, not the way the film should look at all. We hope to preserve the film properly. This is one of my tasks for the next couple of years. I hope uh, we could present it in a much better quality soon. But in the meantime, uh, this is the only version available. And for a film that was not available at all for about 65 years or so, it is, of course, a great improvement. Um, I will not say much about the uh, artistic style of the film, but I think you could um, appreciate the remarkable use of close-ups. Chervikov wanted his actors to be as motionless as possible, not even use their mimics to the full extent, so they could concentrate on their eyes, and then the camera and uh, the scissors the, on the editing table would do the rest of the work. Um, did he have a significant influence on his contemporaries? Well, there's at least one, th one influence that is extremely important. Uh, a filmmaker who openly admitted being influenced by Chervikov is the great Soviet uh, Ukrainian filmmaker Alexander Dovzhenko. And this link is quite enough to, for Chervikov to remain in history. But um, I hope you will appreciate his intonation, his voice, which really stands out, I think, not only uh, in Soviet films, but in, in world cinema of the late 20s. Enjoy the film. Thank you.